everyone welcome back to my channel it's Gabby in today's video I just wanted to sit down and talk to you guys about what it's like living within a sighted world now this is something that I feel is very important and I think that more and more people within the blind community are starting to discuss it more and if you are someone who's in the blind community and you feel very strongly about this, please let me know down below in the comments some of your thoughts and opinions and just overall what your life is like, you know, just being able to and having to kind of live within a sighted world. So let's jump into the video. For me, I feel like growing up, I was never really surrounded by other blind kids until I got enrolled into my first ever program where I met a lot of other blind individuals and before that you know it was just kind of me being surrounded by a lot of sighted people so my brothers and just like family and things like that and so for me there was a lot of this sort of processing that I had to kind of do for myself especially once I lost my sight because for me it was just like okay, all of these sighted people around you, there's no other blind person that you've ever met before, especially being such a young little kid. Um, so, you know, what what is your adjustment process going to look like? And so for me, it took me getting enrolled into programs to really be able to say, hmm, maybe I could, you know, live my life without being able to see or you know, I could live my life independently and not have to worry about my disability. But at the end of the day, there was still this concern in my mind of like, how am I going to do that? You know, especially losing my sight at such a young age. For me, the question was really a matter of, yes, I can adjust to this and I can learn to accept it. But how am I going to go throughout the rest of my life with this disability? And so for me... A lot of it was just finding other people like myself who were in this community and the truth is something you really need to know that's very important is that blindness is a spectrum okay I say this all the time because it's true blindness is a spectrum so you you can't compare one blind person's experience and journey to another blind person's experience and journey because they're not gonna be the same thing but for me, it was wonderful to be able to join these programs and make such wonderful friends with other blind people, especially knowing that a lot of them were kind of, you know, on different parts of their journey where some of them were able to kind of say like, hey, maybe these are some of the things you're going to experience along the way. Or, yeah, you know, I'm going through that as well. And so it was very comforting to know that I wasn't alone when I was going through my whole sight loss journey. And I think that acceptance is something that you know it takes time and it's not something especially when you you're dealing with a tragedy or you're dealing with something that's really difficult for you it's something that kind of takes some time to adjust to and, and accept so for me knowing that I had a community to come to and knowing that I had a group of people that I could be like oh yeah like these people get where I'm coming from you know it's it's such a wonderful thing and I still have access to that today and I say all of this to say because this world, the truth is it was never designed for people like myself. It was never designed for people with disabilities. The world was always designed for people who were able-bodied and sighted. And that makes it harder for the people like myself who have disabilities because it makes us have to fight 1,000%, like so much more than the average person. And we are just average people, but... You know, a lot of people in this world don't see it that way. Huh, no pun intended. But a lot of people don't see it that way. And so when you are talking about advocacy, a lot of the time, blind people and other disabled people are put in situations where they're forced to have to advocate for themselves because materials and just things that they need in life to help them succeed and, and you know, live a normal life like everybody else they don't have access to those things. And I think that that is something that, it's it's just a really hard thing to try to, to try to cope with because I am someone who really does strongly believe in the power of using your voice and the power of being proactive and standing up for what you believe in. 
But there does come a point in time where, you know, you're going to keep doing those things and you're going to keep believing and you're going to keep fighting. But there's a time when you're like, hmm, well, we've been doing all this stuff. Like all of the people that are within the disabled communities, we've been doing all these things. When are, like, when is the rest of the world going to pay attention to what we're trying to say and to what we're trying to do? Because... Again, it goes back to things being more accessible to sighted people. Like, it's easier for, let's say, Marina to be able to go to class and have easy access to the necessary assignments that she would need versus someone like myself who did struggle a lot in college and had a lot of issues where it came up with accommodations. And so I think that when you talk about adapting to living in a sighted world, it means having to be, a, like, it just means you have to fight a lot more. And that's something I learned very, like, like in my teenage years mostly. Because after losing my sight, it was just a matter of me trying to figure out how, I, how to accept this disability. How do I adjust to this new lifestyle? Like, what am I going to do? And how am I going to live my life now knowing that I no longer can see? So for me, figuring out how to adjust in my own timing was something that I needed to do for myself. And so I feel like for me growing up, a lot of my life was and and is still just very much me trying to educate people. And the truth is, like I've said this before, there's some people that are just genuinely ignorant people like you just can't fix that you know you can try your hardest to try to like help somebody change their mind on something but the truth is unless that person really wants to make an effort to try to to try to like adjust to something or try to accept something they're really not going to and so I know that there are people who are out there that are genuinely interested in how blind people live their lives and how other disabled people live their lives and that's why a lot of you are on you know you watch us on youtube and you pay attention to the things that we say because it is important and i think that the more that i can use my voice to educate and to help spread awareness to my community the more that i can play a part in being part of changing this world for the better because i think that a lot of the time from a sighted person's perspective they don't view it from the perspective of, oh, wow, these people are struggling. They view it from the perspective, a lot of them do it. I'm not saying every single-sided person that I ever come across is like this, but a lot of sighted people look at disabled people and say, well, they're not capable, or they can't do this, or they're not, you know, they're, they're not normal. Who are you to say what we are? Who are you to tell me what I can do? Who are you to tell me what limits I can set for myself? Who are you to tell me that I can't accomplish what I want to accomplish? I think that that's really such a a closed-minded way of approaching life and at looking at other people within your world and within your your you know just in within your own communities because when sighted people say those things it's just saying like you don't want to open your mind to the possibility of allowing yourself to encounter and to be around other people and getting to know what it's like within other communities that don't pertain to yours i think that a lot of the time i see and i hear people well i don't see a lot of things but i hear a lot of people talk about how they wish that you know oh, we don't want to take the time to, to educate our staff on making things accommod- like accessible or on giving these people an accommodation. And to me, that just means you're leaving out such a larger variety of people when you do that because we know what we're capable of. I know what I'm capable of. I know the things that I'm not capable of. And I know that when I put my mind to doing something, I'm like full speed ahead. I'm going to do it. And if I don't feel that passionate about it, then I'm not going to do it. But when you say that you don't want to take the time to helping to educate your staff, or you don't want to take the time to trying to make something accessible, it just means that you're leaving out such a larger variety of people that could be helping your job and helping to make your job the better place because 
once you let in a lot of other people with disabilities, you're now allowing your job to be the job that's like, we're educated. We know what we're doing. We we have a plan. We're open-minded. But then you can't be inclusive and you can't say that you believe in disability rights and equity and inclusion and then not have disabled people on your team or not have disabled characters playing roles of or not having disabled people playing the role of disabled characters. I think that that just leaves out such a, a huge variety of people whether it's blind or any other disability that's in this world it's like me saying to someone else like oh i don't like you because you're you're blind and there is a lot of that in this community there's a lot of this whole idea of blind people being very competitive and kind of like you know whatever with each other and i have seen that a lot within my own community but i think that there are groups of people within this community who genuinely are open-minded and, and genuinely want to help spread the word and make this world a better place because yes I think that a lot of the time sighted people put these ideas onto disabled people and you make us feel like we we can't do something personally I'm not that person if you tell me right now that I can't do something I'm gonna find a million reasons to prove you wrong because I know what I can do like, I know what I can do, and if I know that I can't do something, then I'm not gonna try to do it. It's just, you have to kind of know when to specifically put your time and energy into something and what battles to pick, and I think that sometimes when you, especially from my perspective as someone who's trying to use their platform for the better, using their voice, and trying to go into a career that requires a lot of me just kind of interacting with different people, you kind of have to say, what are the things that I'm going to allow myself to kind of talk about and, and discuss? And what are the things that after a while I just need to kind of say, you know what, those people aren't changing. I've tried my best to try to help them and they just don't want to. And I think not even just in this specific category of things, but just in, in your life in general, pick the specific battles that you're like, you know what, this is worth me fighting for it. This is worth me putting all my time and energy into it. And if I didn't have the belief and the faith in this idea of what I'm trying to do, I wouldn't be doing this anymore. And believe me, there have been times where I wanted to, to quit YouTube and I wanted to kind of say, you know what, I don't want to do this anymore. But I knew that there were little girls out there who are coming up in this community who need a voice and who need someone to help advocate for them because that's not something that I had growing up. I didn't have the the option to you know have someone that I could relate with or relate to in media that I could be like you know what hmm if she could do that then so can I. The sad truth is that the world is most likely always going to be a sighted world, but the more that we can help to educate more people, the more that we can help to show people why they need to be more open-minded and understanding and less judgmental. And I think that that's something that is such a difficult thing to try to do is to say, you know, let me, let me try to teach this person. Um, it's, it's still sometimes you have to kind of say, well, if they don't really want me to help them or help educate them, you know, at some point, again, it goes back to saying, like, when do you keep going and when do you kind of say, you know what, this person isn't going to change and I don't want to keep on trying to try, keep on trying to like change that person when they're not when they're not going to change for themselves. And so the sad truth is, yes, this world will forever be made for sighted people but i think that those of us within these disabled communities the more that we keep on using our voices and destigmatizing our disabilities the more that sighted people in the world especially the ones that aren't open-minded and that are very judgmental the more that they will hopefully be able to open their eyes and see the fact that we are just like them because i am just like you I can do a lot of things that you can do. I mean, I can't drive. I don't think you would want me on the, the road driving. But aside from that, 
I can do everything else that you can do. And I think that when you limit me or you limit anybody else in my community or within any other disabled community, you're just you're just kind of closing off your mind to being more educated and to understanding what it's like and understanding other lifestyles. And so I think we just need to keep on speaking up and speaking out about what's important to us because it's important that we keep showing people around the world within our communities and even people outside of our communities the importance of being able to educate and destigmatize and get rid of the misconceptions get rid of all the stereotypes get rid of all of the negativity that surrounds dis disability i think more of that needs to happen and i just think that the more that we continue to do that it's going to be a, we're going to be able to change the world a lot more and a lot of for me in my life what it means to adapt to living in a sighted world for me it means being very organized with how i distribute my energy because i think that as a blind woman living in society there's a lot of things that i have to do to adapt the way i do things um whether that's getting up in the morning and just being very very specific with how my day starts especially if i have places to go like i was just discussing this with marina because i'm just like when we when we're making plans to go places i'm like okay well how am i gonna get there where how am i gonna get back home i'm very specific with my day and and just being very alert to my surroundings when i'm out by myself because especially being a woman of color a blind woman of color at that it's like making sure that i'm like tuned into what's going on around me i can't look around and say hmm like that's a way for me to exit out in case there's something suspicious going on you know for sighted people that's a lot easier for you to do because all you can do is just say i don't feel comfortable let me find a way to get out of the situation and you can do that without having to question whether or not you're in a safe environment but for a lot of like myself and and just for other people that i know that's a very difficult thing to do especially someone who cannot see and you don't know specifically where your surroundings are so i think one of the things that i do which is something that a lot of people when i travel independently like if i'm taking an uber or i'm taking my accessible transit they don't know that i do this but what i do is i have one headphone in my ear I one headphone out and I type in my address like wherever I'm going to ahead of time and I track it in my maps and this way I know like oh they didn't make the right turn or like oh they're not going in the right direction and I try to like see like oh maybe they found like a different way of going but then like if they are going somewhere different I'm like hey like excuse me where are you going you going somewhere now you're not following the maps I'm following like we're hello and i think that that helps me and just kind of like being being like just making sure i'm okay and then another thing that i i like to do is like sharing my location with my family before i leave the house to be like yeah this is where i'm going um you know you have my my location so like you know what's going on um so there's a lot of safety precautions that i take just in my everyday life when i'm trying to do things by myself because I think that for me, independence is very important, but I think that also knowing how to be safe and knowing when to be alert and knowing how to like, you know, what they say is true. There's a time and place for everything. Like there's a time and place for you to joke around and have fun, but there's also a time and place where you need to be serious and say like, I need to pay attention to what's happening around me in case I need to figure out like how to get away or if I need to contact like 911 or someone to, to help me. like. Those are things I take into consideration every single time I try to do stuff by myself. And um, especially having anxiety, like it's never, like those things hand in hand, it can be really scary. Um, so just making sure I have specific safety precautions allows me to kind of know how to be more independent and be able to live my life like a normal, normal human being, so. Those are just some of the ways that I kind of have to adapt to living in a sighted world, especially knowing that not everything is accessible for me um, and for other disabled people. So yeah, you guys, I just wanted to talk about that. Thank you guys 
so much for watching this video i hope that you were able to learn a little bit more and i hope that you out there are going to continue to use your voice to help bring awareness to your community and to help educate more people because it's so important and if you haven't done so already please subscribe and i have a couple videos that you can check out somewhere up there on the screen i'm just pointing um but my wonderful assist assistant who's also my friend will you know she'll she'll help you guys out with where to go to find my videos anyways thank you guys i will catch you in the next video bye curiosity over wow these people are very rude the the stupid uh police or whatever the sirens but um <laughs> <laughs> yeah let's wait till they huh? what? i was like i thought you were referring to like police being mean to you no i was like, I was like what <laughs> oh my god we should leave that in there yeah we should i have to burp gonna keep that in there too oh my god <laughs> this video is a mess but you know what it's okay it's it's a bit of like very serious and also very crazy and funny and i think Oh. <laughs> oh my god, that was hilarious. I know, right? I'm like giving this super sentimental speech and then all I hear is <laughs> <laughs> What happened? <laughs>